Hello, everybody, and welcome to this uh, very exciting session on spotlighting Botswana. Before I begin and introduce our panelists, I'd like to turn everybody's attention to a video that is sharing a few words from the CEO of BITC, Mr. Kiletsu Sile Olebile. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished members of the Empower Africa Business Network and the community at large, honorable speakers and delegates from Botswana and around the world, I am delighted to officially welcome you to this important session that is putting a spotlight on Botswana. I want to thank firstly Mr. Ezi Rappaport, Caleb Zipperstein and Kizo Matsejo from Empower Africa team for coordinating this session and offer my gratitude also to Julius Tseko, my colleague from Botswana Investment and Trade Center, as well as Mr. Mbaki C. Hopolang from the Debswana Pension Fund, and Arun Ia from Alpha Direct for sharing their important perspectives on driving business in Botswana. Allow me to take a moment prior to passing the virtual podium to Kalev to offer thanks and congratulations for the significant and growing relationship between Empower Africa and Botswana. First, I want to congratulate Kito Matsejo for being Empower Africa's first business development employee here in Botswana, and Tato Haohani for her impactful internship with the agricultural team. We are proud of you and look forward to your continued success and working with you. I also want to thank Empower Africa, its panelists and its exhibitors for their meaningful participation at the recent virtual Global Expo Botswana. Your insights were very much appreciated and inspiring to our youth and to our companies that wish to explore both innovation and agriculture business opportunities. We look forward to welcoming you and everybody here to Botswana at the next Global Expo in 2021. Importantly, I want to congratulate the BITC and Empower Africa for the signing of the historic MOU which we entered into recently. We are looking forward to partnering on global events and trade missions, agri agricultural projects, innovation and entrepreneurship, and global investment promotion. We are confident in this potential of this uh, partnership with Empower Africa and our extended community are excited to do great things together. Botswana is undergoing a historic transformation and is open for business. I encourage you all to engage with Empower Africa and the Botswana Investment and Trade Center as you explore business here. And I look forward to seeing you all in person soon. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the networking sessions. We would like to close by saying Botswana, our pride, your destination, Pula. Well, thank you so much, uh, Honorable CEO, for your, for your time and for your incredible welcoming words to the session. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you all today. My name is Caleb Zipperstein. I'm a member of the Business Development and Investments Team here at Empower Africa. And I'm pleased to be speaking to you today, delivering the session from the continent itself. I'm here in the beautiful Kigali, Rwanda. And I look forward to spending time with each and every one of you on the continent at some point in the near future. I'm very honored and privileged to be hosting this panel today on Botswana. I had the distinct pleasure of visiting the country last year for the 2019 Global Expo Botswana at the warm and gracious invitation of the BITC. And it was actually while I was on that trip working in a venture capital fund at the time that I was inspired to not drive investment from Africa into developed economies but rather inspired to drive investment in Africa. So I'm grateful to be with the Empower Africa team and working towards that goal. And it was on that trip 
to Botswana last summer when I met the three great panelists who I'm so grateful for them giving some time today just to see them and to catch up with them, but also to share some insights with all of you here in the crowd. So I wanna welcome them very warmly on behalf of Empower Africa. Let's welcome Julius Checo, who's the uh, project manager for the Global Expo Botswana from the Botswana Investment and Trade Center. Let's welcome Arun Ayer, who's the CEO and founder of Alpha Direct Insurance. And let's welcome Bakisi Khopolong from the Botswana Pension Fund. Gentlemen, my friends, Thank you, Caleb. so great to be here today. Let's start with Mr. Julius from the BITC. One of the three um, core goals of Empower Africa is driving trade. Mr. Checo, can you please tell us a little bit more about how the BITC is working to drive trade through the, through, through the various programs that it has, as well as uh, the Global Expo Botswana, which you lead? Julius, it's a pleasure to have you here, and I uh, thank you for your remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Caleb. Uh, it's a pleasure, uh, and thank you for having me. Uh, Botswana Investment and Trade Center is an integrated investment and trade promotion agency of the government of Botswana. It was set up in 2012 as a measure of two uh, now disbanded organizations, one being the former Botswana Export Development and Investment Authority that was popularly known as BEDIA, and the other one was Botswana International Financial Services Center. So they were merged in 2012 to form BITC. Uh, whose main mandate is to you know promote and attract investment into the country as well as to you know promote our products and services in international markets and uh, to manage our nation brand uh, the one that you heard our ceo saying you know our pride your destination that is brand botswana so in our efforts to drive investment we have a couple of core departments or business units that you know drive this huge uh, mandate uh, that is being bestowed on BITC one we have the export development and promotion agency where you know we have or as I've already mentioned where we promote uh, our goods and services in other markets we also have the investment promotion agency where you know when investors foreign investors come into the country that's their first stop at the investment uh, promotion department. You know, um, investors come with different uh, require, uh, requirements. Some might need land, some might need just factory space, some might need assistance with work and residence permits and so on. So what will normally happen is that we'll give you, you know, a criteria for you to follow to, to come up with a plan, which will go through a pre-assessment after the pre-assessment, then you'll go, your, your, your business plan will go to the investment appraisal committee. The investment appraisal committee is the one that is going to look at your business plan to see, you know, how much are you planning to invest into the country, to see how much resources, financial resources, technical resources do you have, and uh, to see how much employment are you going to create for Botswana, because those are the you know the the measures that uh, that are that we are measured uh, on as an as an organization once you have onboarded you as a, as one of our investors then we will be able to assist you with you know a range of uh, uh, assistance that 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 we give to 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 investors such as helping you with registering your entity helping you with applying for utilities helping you with land, helping you with factory space. We do have some factory shells within BITC, although they are not enough. So if, if, if our uh, factory shells are fully let, then we assist you with finding factory space within the market. Uh, we also do investor aftercare. Once we have set up, we also do aftercare to ensure that you know, your business continues to grow. So basically that's what we do. And then at Global Expo, where I'm the project manager, we Global Expo is a special project that is that helps to support the whole uh, mandate of the BITC. It is a B2B, you know, trade exposition. Uh, 
that aims to attract FDI into the country and promote uh, our products and services into other markets. So, so in a nutshell, that's what we do at, at BITC. Uh, and then I will maybe going forward, I will be able to briefly, you know, tell our audience about the investment opportunities that are here in Botswana for those that are that may be interested in uh, exploring such opportunities. Thank you, Caleb. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julius. And if I can just follow up with a quick question, because we're blessed at Empower Africa to have a very diverse audience. I, I know in the in the crowd today, we we, we don't just have investors and government agencies and uh, you know incredible entrepreneurs such as you guys here but we also have um, agriculture experts we have mm -hmm. you know younger companies with different products that may not yeah. just be looking at books at the books one necessarily as, as a investment destination but they may be looking at it as a, a market for you know for, for the you know the, the implementation and the delivery of global technologies and solutions as well as also hopefully looking looking for looking for some of the incredibly talented people in the country to help them support their businesses. Before we move on, can you just touch up, you know, touch on those two concepts maybe for maybe for a minute or two here? I think in terms of uh, agricultural technologies, I did you know impress upon uh, you guys when I when I visited Tel Aviv last time that you know we as a country we. We, we are looking at moving into a knowledge-based economy. And one of the ways uh, for us to move into a knowledge-based economy is to partner with you know, entities such as Empower Africa and uh, Israel to, to, a, to, a, to a larger extent, because we believe that you've done really well when it comes to agricultural technologies. And we believe that we could benefit a lot from working with you. And that's one of the major region, the reasons why we entered into an MOU with Empower Africa. But I must hasten to add that already, you know, some groundwork has been done within, within Botswana, within government. If you take the Minister of Agricultural Development and Food Security, they have really invested a lot in, uh, in research. They have invested a lot in, in human capital. They have a lot of PhDs, uh, with PhDs within, within, within their ranks, which means, you know, if we, we, we bring import uh, skills or technical expertise from Israel, they are not going to start from scratch. They will be working with, you know, people that are already very much knowledgeable. There's a lot of research that has already been done about Botswana. So, so you know, it's, it's just a, about tapping into whatever that is already there. We also have Botswana University of Agriculture and Natural Resources, which has done a lot and is continuing to do a lot of research uh, within the agricultural space. So, so I believe that in as much as we need, you know, partnership uh, from Israel, we, we already have something. We, 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 you know, we won't be starting from scratch. So it will be a good partnership because, you know, it's great to, 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 to work with people who already know what they are doing. So, so I think for us, we just need maybe your inspiration. Uh, like Mao said that it's possible to, to grow fish and shrimps in the desert in uh, they have, you have done it in israel so we believe we can do the same in Botswana, especially now that you know just yesterday that the minister of agriculture was talking about a new strategy or policy on aquaculture so which aims to really you know uh, improve uh, aquaculture production in Botswana and to ensure that in a couple of years within a couple of years we are able to export uh, fish and shrimps you know, to the world as per, you know, our dream, me and Mao's dream when we met in February. Yeah. Beautiful, yes. And we are very, very grateful to have entered into this MOU with you and are excited. And also from our own experience, as uh, Kel said, we've hired people on the ground in Botswana and we've yeah. been so, so, so blessed by their presence, by their, um, by their, by their teamwork. Um, and so we and then, encourage everybody yeah. here that's, you know, looking for talent on the continent um, or talent in general, uh, to hire to hire and to hire in Botswana and uh, yeah and I'm proud that they are my product because they were they, 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 yes they were, yes <laughs> my intense last year at, at global Expo before you before you snap them <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, All right. it, was, it yeah. was a pleasure and they're in, they're in, good, they're in good hands um, thank you so much so, so, so great moving on the second 
pillar of job creation. Julius, thank you so much for touching up okay. on, on trade you. and getting a little bit into investment. But the second pillar is job creation. And there's no more powerful job creating force in a, in a country than, on, than an entrepreneur that builds an incredibly uh, impactful, high growth, successful business. And that is what our next uh, panelist, Arun Iyer, has done with, with, uh, with, with Alpha Direct. And we're so grateful to him joining. I actually met Arun last year when he won an award by Grant Thornton, one of the leading uh, accounting, global accounting firms, but with a large presence on, on the continent, um, was acknowledged for what you've done with Alpha, Alpha Direct. Arun, tell us a little bit about your story, about um, how, you know, what inspired you to, to move home and build a business, and what it's been like building a wildly successful business uh, in Botswana, and, uh, and, 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 and what it's meant for you. Thanks, uh, Caleb, and, and thanks, Julius, for um, touching on some really uh, interesting uh, topics. I think, you know, to me, Botswana is one of the most underrated destinations on earth. Um, and I think no matter how much Julius or any of his colleagues at BITC tell people, um, people need to actually come and meet with fellow entrepreneurs and, and see, you know, what, what the potential of Botswana. Um, so I'm actually involved in in, in two BITC accredited um, ventures. Um, one is Flowtech Industries, which um, we started in 1998. Um, <clears throat> I'm not involved with the management, but I am a shareholder and on the board. Um, and, and we've built a great export-oriented business um, out of Botswana that now operates in five countries. Um, but, you know, what I'm here to talk about and what you're familiar with, Caleb, is um, Alpha Direct, which is also BITC accredited, um, primarily because of the fact that we, um, when we started, we raised uh, some capital from a US-based family office. And um, our idea was um, to build a um, Botswana-based uh, regional player in the, in the fintech, insurtech space. That was the, the vision that we started with. Um, we started out, um, you know, uh, essentially with, as an insurance company, but as a direct insurance underwriter um, in the Botswana market. And we got a license um, from the, the non-bank financial institutions regulatory authority here. Um, prior to Alpha Direct, I was I grew up in Botswana, spent my whole life in Botswana, except for um, a spell in the U.S. where I, um, I went to study and, and also ran my own business. And uh, of course, my my dad, who was one of the founders of Flowtech, um, passed away, and so I decided to move back um, for two reasons: uh, one, because I love Botswana, and two, because Africa is the future. Um, and um, I knew that um, if I was going to make a move, I was not going to do it when I was 50 years old or 60 years old. I was going to do it. Um, while I still had that uh, drive and energy and uh, determination to go build something. And so um, I've always been a, a finance person and my co-founder um, and brother has always been a technology person. So we kind of put our, our forces together and, um, and we developed um, <clears throat> now what is a um, InsurTech that is rapidly expanding into um, many other countries in Africa. Um, in the next couple of months, we will be in uh, South Africa um, and Zambia. And we have uh, also got plans in the next year or two to expand into a couple of other countries in Africa, with Botswana being uh, the base um, for, for all our operations. Um, we are also, in addition to being BITC accredited, we're also accredited by the Botswana Innovation Hub, um, which, is, which is where we developed um, uh, all of our software, which is hosted on the AWS uh, platform uh, and runs our suite of instant insurance products that we sell in about 20 retail stores, soon to be 60 in Botswana, and uh, hopefully within the next 12 months, a couple of hundred retail operations uh, in, in neighboring countries. And so the idea is basically that, um, you know, we wanted to build and develop a, a base of intellectual property in Botswana that can then be exploited um, across the continent. The, the big idea um, is, is around financial inclusion. 
Um, so um, we, you know, we, we've launched a product um, that, that sold uh, in a box format uh, in retail operations and gives you instant insurance cover. And um, in a few months, we've acquired about 8,500 customers in Botswana, and we're acquiring new customers at a rate of about 4,000 a month. Um, wow. And uh, we are looking to scale that into the region. Um, financial inclusion is very difficult. It is, it is very difficult to deliver a, a product um, that caters for people that can't afford um, a certain um, you know, financial service that you're trying to render. Um, but uh, we believe we've kind of cracked the code and we filed the first private company um, patent application in South Africa about a year and a half ago. And we then extended that patent application to the PCT patent convention in Geneva. And um, the goal is to keep innovating and keep building new products out of Botswana and uh, exporting it into, into Africa. So, you know, we kind of, as entrepreneurs, I think we are here to support government's mandate, which is, you know, job creation um, and the shift, the transfer to a knowledge-based economy. So if you look at the business that we were involved, or we are involved in on the manufacturing side, um, you know, we managed to create about 600 um, jobs for Botswana over the last 22 years and about a thousand jobs uh, in, in five countries. And with, with Alpha Direct, we are looking um, at a similar sort of growth pattern, but more focused on service uh, business rather than manufacturing. So higher end jobs rather than lower end jobs. And um, we're also, the, the idea for us behind Alpha Direct was to prove that a venture funded technology business can be built out of Botswana. And um, it's never been done before. So we hope that uh, we can we can prove that it can happen, and uh, if we do, then it's going to be it's going to be a great thing, and I think it'll it'll motivate a lot of other entrepreneurs to come and try their hand and stake their claim on the future of Africa using Botswana as a base. That's ex that's exactly it, and uh, I should have asked you to tell me your story, you know, again a, a couple hours ago, so I wouldn't have been so. Uh, overwhelmed hearing it again. I remember when you told me in Botswana and I had the exact same reaction. It does not get old and uh, I'm incredibly, um, you know, just just humbled to be here with you today and hear the story and your success and the, the, the growth that you've led to and we will be watching closely uh, your success and encouraging, <laughs> uh, you know, people to, people to, follow, to, to, to follow that. Um, with the interest of time, we are going to move on to investment. Um, Arun, afterwards, I am going to ask for just one minute for you to touch on the Botswana Angel Network because we heard about angels from Tommy. We want to hear about it from you. But one of the main drivers of investment in Africa are the pension funds. And we're very pleased to be joined by, uh, by Bakisi here, um, one of, uh, one, one of uh, um, the analysts at the Botswana Pension Fund who's also a good friend of mine that we've uh, had, a, had a little bit of back and forth over the, over, over the year about venture capital and alternatives. So Mr. Mbakisi would be delighted to hear um, you know, your perspectives uh, from both your position at the pension fund and hear more about the pension fund and what it's looking at, as well as just your you know, general great perspective as a young analyst on, uh, on uh, the alternative asset class. All right, thank you so much, Caleb. Uh, good day, um, fellow panelists. Good day, audience at large. It's an honor and a pleasure. As Caleb has mentioned, my name is Mbekisi Hopalang. Uh, uh, it's a two-man team. Uh, I'll just give you a little bit of history about the fund. Uh, the Epsona Pension Fund is a defined contribution fund that was set up in 1984. Um, it has approximately 12,500 members and we have assets under management of 850 million. The fund is the largest private sector pension fund and the second largest uh, pension fund overall uh, after the government uh, offices public pension fund. Um, most of the investments are based off of offshore. Uh, we are allowed to invest up to 70% of our assets offshore and up to 30% onshore. 
Uh, the main reason is that uh, when uh, the regulator was looking at investable, investable opportunities uh, onshore, uh, there wasn't um, enough quality investments in which um, institutional investors could put their money in. So they gave a little bit of leeway from that end. But as the country continues to grow, as the country continues to need more investment, this is something <clears throat> that is uh, uh, going to change in the next couple of years. I'm just going to talk a little bit about investments and then I'll talk uh, about alternative investments. Um, so as a pension fund, we invest uh, up to 55% of our investments offshore. Um, in regards to equities, we're invested in global equities at 39%, uh, global emerging markets at 7%. Uh, we've seen the emergence of China as a global superpower and their inclusion into indexes such as the MSCI um, Emerging Market Index. So we've seen it to be prudent to invest in such um, you know, emerging markets. And um, as of 2020, we've invested up to 33% uh, of our assets under management in China. And this has bared you know, really good investment returns for our members. Um, we've also invested across the African continent. We are looking to develop capital markets um, across Africa, we've allocated 1% of assets to Africa. Uh, we are also invested in alternative investments. We've invested in a private um, Pan-African mezzanine fund uh, at about 1%. Later on, I will touch on why I believe alternative investments will play a critical role in the growth of Botswana. Uh, in terms of global fixed income, we invest about a percent. Global emerging markets, about 3%. Locally, 45% of our assets are onshore. We've invested 16% uh, in uh, local equity markets. Um, we're looking to develop the space. Uh, once Mr. Arun is looking to list, uh, it will be something <laughs> that we could potentially look at. I was going to say, if you're looking for Not a only in the Botswana context, but in... Bakisi, I think you froze for a second. Yeah, I, th I think just to, just to add to what he was saying, and, and hopefully while he's uh, coming back, um, you know, I think Botswana's um, capital markets are also sort of ripe for entrepreneurs looking to raise capital, um, especially African entrepreneurs. I think we we have a lot of excess capital. So, um, you know, just like Mbakisi was saying, um, you know, the Botswana Pension Fund is forced to invest a lot of a larger percentage of their assets offshore than perhaps they might want to. Mm -hmm. Um, because there's just not enough um, equities on our local boards. Um, wow. And so it takes entrepreneurs to be able to build substantial businesses that can raise capital and deploy that capital meaningfully um, across the continent. Um, back to you, Mbakisi. I see you back. Great insight. Thank you, Arun. Yes. No, no, thank you so much for that. Um, as you mentioned, yeah, as I mentioned, we are looking to develop, you know, these companies that will not only uh, spur growth for Botswana, but for the continent as a whole. Um, as you know, Botswana is a mineral rich uh, country. Um, you know, most of our wealth comes from diamonds. Uh, they represent about 80 percent of the, 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 the mineral income and mineral income uh, represents about 20 to 25 percent of GDP. So, um, you know, when you're invested in minerals, one thing that you're susceptible to is uh, uh, volatile commodity markets. And that has been quite, you know, difficult on Botswana. So the government has seen it prudent mm -hmm. to really try to invest within the country and diversify. Uh, we also have quite a heavy Im uh, import. Uh, the import bill is about 600 million US dollars a month, while exports are only about 300 million. So there is that gap between um, uh, the, the imports and the exports, so that has obviously put us in a trade deficit. Uh, youth unemployment is high at you know records of forty percent. Unemployment generally is at eighteen percent. So you know this has really made us think at the pension fund about what can we do with our assets to develop the economy. So um, we've just thought about you know from the perspective of what are the critical um, areas that you could look at. Uh, you look at uh, countries such as Botswana, which are frontier markets three things that they could look at as energy, uh, food, and uh, and water, right? So um, you look at Botswana, as I said, we are, um, you know, um, an importer, a major importer. So 50% of our power is imported from South Africa. And that is, you know, if, um, expensive and inefficient. So um, if you were to drive um, 150 miles uh, north of the capital city, 
you come to a town called Palape. Palape has a thousand years worth of coal reserves uh, that the country could tap into. And this is something the government is trying to do. But as we know, uh, the world is trying to go green. So, um, you know, the, if, if investment partners were to come to Botswana, they'd have to provide uh, green solutions or uh, any renewable uh, solutions that we could look to buffer the, the, the um, electricity supply with the country. From a food perspective, as Mr. Juliet had mentioned, we're looking to, you know, grow more food within Botswana, whether it is with um, um, uh, aquaculture or it is, you know, your, your typical grains, your maize, your meals, things of that nature. And the government has done a lot of initiatives. Um, so we are also looking to support this um, to a certain extent. As I'd mentioned, we do invest in um, private companies across the continent. Uh, we don't necessarily, we haven't necessarily um, gotten into the venture space, but you know, we do want to uh, have um, those type of companies be able to grow. And we will also try to find out how we can get into that space. Um, so these are continuing initiatives that we're trying, trying to um, afford uh, in terms of um, what's on. I have to ask one. I, I have to ask one more before Thank you. Uh, uh, before we have to wrap up here. But you see, um, you know, this is open. If Arun and Julius, you want to chime yes. in, as as an investment analyst and somebody who spends yes. all day seeing different companies, let's you know take off your Botswana pension pension fund hat for a second. What are some of the things that you personally are seeing that you personally are excited about? If you're able to to, to touch upon those. All right, thank you for that. Um, yeah, uh, in, in some of those spaces, we've seen a little bit of movement. Uh, if you look at energy, uh, Botswana is a very, very hot culture, uh, or a hot country, excuse me. Um, so, you know, we've seen, um, you know, activities coming about within solar, and we think that that could be, you know, a, a good, um, you know, a good producer um, for the country, and it could spur economic activity. Uh, from the food front, uh, we've seen the government, you know, really, really, really take, you know, bold steps um, to, um, you know, spur this um, sector. So there is a lot of activity coming in from that, uh, from that perspective. We also have uh, a VC fund that is in the form of um, CEDA. So they've done a lot in terms of funding local uh, companies. Uh, so you've seen that, you know, there, there've been a lot of Botswana going into the tourism industry. There've been a lot of Botswana looking to go into manufacturing. Um, and even though, you know, there are, you know, small shoots here and there, there's a lot more that can be done. Uh, Botswana is a very young country, only 50, um, 54 years old. So you can see that, you know, there's opportunity everywhere from um, manufacturing to, you know, food to, you know, um, even automobiles is something that could be looked at, you know, the, the, the rate of uh, cars that are being imported. We could look to maybe produce uh, local cars like what's being done in, in Rwanda. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity. I think that as you look at the import bill, you can find pockets of opportunity that would allow Botswana to be less. Yeah, uh, uh, Caleb, uh, do I have time? I, I think for me, what is more exciting is uh, what is happening at a, as a, at a newly established university called the Buse in Palape. Palape, which um, Bagisi just mentioned now, as Botswana International University of Science and Technology. They're doing a lot of research mm -hmm. around uh, clean, you know, coal technologies, how we can utilize the billions of tons of coal that we have, uh, but also taking into consideration, you know, en environmental uh, impact. So, you know, just recently we learned that whatever that you can get from a carbon fuel such as you know petroleum oil you can also get from coal such as petrol gasoline uh, diesel and so on gas and so on and the bills are doing a lot of research into that and uh, i hope that you know uh, a lot of some people or investors that are looking into clean coal uh, technologies uh, can look at bills what bills is doing and uh, you know look for invest investment opportunities there Thank you. Wow, this was this was incredible. Um, unfortunately, we have to wrap up, but fortunately, there still is networking. There still is the tables. Uh, if anybody wants to ask questions about Botswana's water challenges, which I see we have one here, 
If anybody would like to hear more about the BITC, the Pension Fund, Alpha Direct, and the Botswana Angel Network, uh, I hope that our uh, panelists are going to stay around and network for a little bit uh, for, for folks to be able to, um, to, 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 to ask a couple of questions. Also, um, in inviting you all to check out the, uh, the, the, the demos um, in the uh, exhibition hall. And um, I want to thank you all so much for being here. My panelists, our, our panelists, my dear friends, thank you so much for taking, taking some time to be here with us. And thank you to all for attending. We look forward to uh, catching up in person at some point. I think as they say, Pula. Thank you. Thank you, Caleb. Pula. 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 Thank you, Mr. Caleb. Thank you, panelists. Much appreciated.